Welcome to the Cube's coverage of KubeCon EU 2024, live from Paris, France. Join hosts Savannah Peterson, Dustin Kirkland, and Rob Strache as they interview some of the brightest minds in cloud native computing. Coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con is brought to you by Red Hat, CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. The Cube's coverage of KubeCon EU 2024 begins right now. Good afternoon, Cloud Native community, and welcome back to Paris, France. We are here at the fun and fabulous KubeCon Cloud Native Con, CNCF's largest event in Europe. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by my fantastic co-host, Rob Strecce. Rob, we are just powering through the evening. This is awesome. I mean, it, the energy is here. That's keeping us going. Yeah. And it's about to get crazy in here with the booth crawl. So I think we're, we're getting there with all of this really good knowledge that we're sharing is just fantastic. It really is fantastic. And speaking of fantastic, we have two super fantastic CUBE veterans on this desk. I feel like balaji has been on camera almost as much as I have the last yeah. few months. <laughs> and Natalie, too, great to see you again see after you. our reunion in Amsterdam last time. How's the show going for you guys? You're all smiles. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was a part of the Backstage Con yesterday, and it was a co-host of the Backstage Con. It was doing really well. We had a large uh, audience, like 400 or 500 people there. It was a great event. Tell and us a little more about that. Yeah, I mean, so Backstage Con, um, you know, is, is a pre-event in, in Cubicon, right, yesterday. Yeah. Um, we had, uh, you know, quite a number of uh, people uh, who are implementers like H&M, Bold.com, uh, oh, cool. uh, different, lots of customers like who are actually implementing backstage, but up on stage talking about it. We also have the maintainers and the contributors, as well as other people talking about it. So we, it was a very nice event. It's a really community inclusive yeah. experience. I mean, it was it was great because I actually got to go to some of it, and I, I was uh, very intrigued by uh, the guy from Spotify, where he came in and he customized the colors and the patterns and showed like American Airlines and how they had customized it and things of that nature, and which I think is just so smart to help organizations and you know platform engineering have their own brand within an organization. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's why Backstage is successful, right? It's the ability to customize for your company, right? If you just say, like I said, the EU's IBM example, right? Um, but you know, if you're able to customize the platform for you, that's why developers can associate with it. And it's not only the, the colors and themes, it's also what tools they can use, the templates, which is essentially the, the best practices for that organization, can also be there. So that's why the backstage is resonating with the audience because it gives all the primitives to build something for you, for for end user. That's why it's great. Natalia, I want to ask you a little bit more about those tools, software templates. You provide a lot of resources. Yeah, absolutely. Look, uh, the community is also growing in this space. There's a momentum for platform engineering, a momentum for uh, up depth focus in uh, Kubernetes uh, community landscape. And so what Backstage community is doing is providing a standard way to deploy software, so-called software template or golden path. Yeah. Uh, is a way you can scaffold an application from scratch or adding an application, a component to an existing application. They give you uh, on-ram guidelines to set up new, set up a new uh, environment, new uh, tools, new framework, and it's also a standard way to deploy software. In, in defining in a standard way. So we're defining a standard and everyone is converging to this standard. That's why the community is uh, so cool about this approach. And we've seen the momentum also yesterday in Backstage Con. Lots of people okay. were there about asking about the software template, IDPs. Uh, I observed, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, uh, you know, uh, more, more, the amount of questions were bigger, the people, the, the Backstage Con was more crowded uh, I, I've seen that, that this community is really growing uh, in, this, in, this, in this part. There's a little bit of a maturity even from Chicago to here. I think Chicago was like more like earlier adopters. I mean, maybe it's Europe, but if you look at the, the people that, who raise their hands, 70% are already using Backstage. We, used, we did a poll in the beginning. So we, you know, that, that's pretty good. I mean, like for, to have a conference where people are actually using it already, that's pretty good. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, that's pretty impressive. I mean, it, it was, it was a, I mean, I thought it was a more than 50, 60 percent, right? Usually, I, will, yeah. I don't expect, I have to expect like 20, 30 percent, but the, I, would, I would think it's more than 60 percent. Yeah, I, I think I, it's I, Europe is very, very far uh, adopting technologies fast and better. Well, I think it also, it helps from a resourcing perspective if you can bring things together, and I think this is kind of that 
what is platform engineering versus what is the developer role and how does that how's that going to play out? Because I, I kind of look at, you know, platform engineering is really the new, the new IT. It's really where things get done to help, you know, developers. But is that what you guys are seeing in kind of your design focus with your products that are built on backstage? Yeah, I mean, go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah. go, go, go. Yeah, so basically like, you know, <laughs> we view this, you know, like I think there's two, two points to it, right? So the, 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 the platform al always existed. I mean, it did, platform is not a new concept. The, the IDP really helps it bring it, bring it together. So the, for the first time, the, the productivity of the dollop, developers actually increases tremendously because the ability to bring it together with a, something like an IDP. Yeah. Right. And IDP, just for those who are out there, is a developer portal is what you're talking about. That's a good about, one. Right? So yeah. the, you're right, yeah. there's actually a little two words here. I, in terms of platform, you can call that the whole platform as an IDP as well, but the portal is basically the UI for the, you know, the platform. Right. So for us, for me, that's where the, the rubber meets the road for the developers. It's really the personalization of the views, of the dashboards, of everything they want to do in one place makes it uh, very interesting. Yeah. Can I add anything more? Yeah, yeah. I want, just want, wanted to add that the platform engineer is the professional uh, uh, figure that really cares about the experience for developers. That's why there's uh, this other uh, thread called developer experience. And having a portal, internal developer portal, is a way to implement this developer experience. And the platform engineer is actually the impersonification tree role, if you will. One is like being a product manager for the platform. There's a new uh, model service from platform as a service. Now we are pl as a, in a platform as a, a product fashion, if you will. So platform engineer, our product manager, our user experience expert, because they, 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 they follow the developer experience. And also they take my role, which is the, the coolest role in the world, which is the developer advocate. Those are kind of evangelists of the platform. Yeah. They, they, they help the, those developers be on ramp with the platform, with the tooling, with the software template. So that's the platform engineer uh, today. And also the platform engineer is a, an evolution of different uh, roles that we have in the industry. DevOps, developer itself, uh, and, uh, and yeah, we have we've seen we are observing more and more platform teams into uh, communities, in customers, in, uh, in processes. That's a momentum. Yeah, well, and it's going to become more and more prevalent. You showed me a fun meme, Balaji, before we got started with the platform engineer taking the literal heat, the firestorm, so that the developer can curl up peacefully and, and sleep. I, I love that. I'm going to be borrowing that and giving you credit moving forward. But I think I think that's really, it's, it's, a, it's an important way of looking at it, right? This user experience needs to continuously improve because we're, we're in a super inflection point where orders of magnitude more data are about to be processed or are starting to be processed. And we've got different types of hardware. I mean, it's, it's, it's really interesting, honestly. So in terms of empowering them, what's the feedback loop like with the platform engineering teams that you're building for? Thank you for this uh, alley up or yeah. call out, yeah. <laughs> That's, I got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we have these studies defining an ideal developer experience. Mm -hmm. uh, so one pillar is reducing the cognitive load. The second pillar is getting developers into so flow important. state. And the third pillar is the feedback loop. This is yeah. um, one of the most important part. And how we're connecting those, how to make this working, is through the platform that enables this feedback loop early. So, so that you got the feedback from those users, which are the developers, and you can improve the platform. And at the end of the day, if they improve the platform, you improve the process, and you are giving the product in the end of your customer faster. So that's an improvement of uh, productivity. Everybody wins. Yeah, everybody wins. It's a win-win. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's really a win-win. And also you break Love the it. famous so-called wall of confusion where developers don't talk to ops or DevOps because they silos. don't understand each other. But here, here's a common languages, uh, software template, IDPs, uh, collaboration, win-win, uh, again. Mm -hmm. are you, right. oh, Go for sorry. it. Sorry, are, are you looking at it as uh, this is how you're building out, and you, you guys launched developer, the developer platform at Red Hat. How does this play into that and that launch? And that's new, it's brand yes. new by the way, since I've seen yeah. you in December actually. Yeah, I, can, I can take that one. Yeah, yeah I mean, so we, um, we launched a product called Developer Hub, which is basically a commercial offering for Backstage. So we are fully upstream compatible, allows you the oh, customization great. and all the things we talk about. Because if you, don't, if you break that rule, then gonna, nobody's going to buy the product. So right. we want to keep that, uh, you know, the, the, the principle that of, of being 
Switzerland essentially, and also being able to customize it. So we, we, have, we have been in market for two to three months. We have a, a lot of customers already bought it, like a large bank, you know, 6,000, 7,000 customers, um, you know, going to go full stream on it, and you know, we're working to obviously enable them. It's, it's a journey, right? When you, you, know, you, you still have to put your custom templates and whatever the customization we're talking about. But yeah, definitely it's, it's uh, resonating highly and uh, we see a good way to do it. I mean, one, one point I want to add to it, right? The, the platform not only allows you to, like, you know, you talk about developer experience, it also allows you to enforce things. I mean, this is my, sort of one of my favorite topic is the ability to, let's like, say, supply, software supply chain. Everybody talks about software supply chain. But then shift left is pretty obvious that you want to do security as closer to the developer as possible, but it's hard to implement, like for every developer, every time. Right. So with the software template that we, that we are coming out with, it's called the Red Hat uh, Trusted Application uh, Pipeline concept, we're talking, uh, that's another product we're launching, uh, which is basically codifying that and having that available out of, out of the box. So instead of doing shift left and putting the burden on the, on the developer, you're shifting down. So the infrastructure takes care of that. So developers, like, they do a click and then they get that full, uh, highly secure software supply chain ready-made for them. That's basically reducing the effort and also getting compliance quickly. I was going to bring that up. Security, compliance, more yeah. important than ever. How, how are you building and working to help developers solve for that? Yeah, I'm gonna ask you, Natalia, because I know that's it's, a good point. Because, I know it's a hot topic for you. Uh, yeah, it's a hot topic, and uh, you know we need to again reduce the cognitive load for developers. Yes. Reduce complexity. How do we get the security in place so that it's simple for them? Right. Well, if you look at classical division of uh, um, uh, application lifecycle management, there's an onboarding phase, then there's a coding phase called inner loop, then there's a, a deployment uh, a pipeline phase called outer loop. No? Those are phases. But security should be in all of those phases, from right. onboarding into project to deploying to production. How do we make that easier? Again, we think we putting these security bits in software templates really make that easier because uh, Balaji was mentioning we're launching a new product called Trusted Software Supply Chain uh, that will have a, a part containing uh, uh, um, the code verification, the code signing, mm -hmm. and also a part that can sign container image, sign pipeline execution, verify with policy at runtime. So it's a, it's a 360 degrees. How do we um, <coughs> uh, avoid the complexity for developers? Yeah. If they use Developer Hub or uh, any IDPs, right, they can just create a software, uh, use a software template to scaffold a new application which is built in that secure way as defined. So the code needs to be in some ter in cer certain way. The dependencies, look at the supply chain security is, al is also a very hot topic. How do you uh, have an inventory of those dependencies? How do you scan those dependencies? Can yeah. you scan upfront? Can you provide those secure dependencies upfront? Yes. From the software template, you can provide the right dependencies, and then you have all the tooling that help you signing the code, signing the container image, signing the pipeline, verifying the policy. So that we think this might be a good option for developers. Yeah, to, I mean, this is a great example of a platform engineering, really helping the helping the development completely, right? So I think there's a huge value of that. Like developers individually don't know how to figure all of these things out. They don't know which tool to use, what standards to follow across a large company. I mean, it would be an enormous catalog of exactly. knowledge you would have to have. I think and he's a Java yeah. developer, yeah. you know, Go developer, he doesn't know any of these things, so having the platform engineering bring that huge value. This is going to, uh, you know, turbocharge the uh, organizational productivity and output. Well, it's the on-ramp phase, right? Because yeah. you join a new For company sure. and you That's have right. to figure out what are the guardrails that this That's company right. has set up. Right. If you put it yeah. into the IDP and you put it into the developer hub, it's a lot easier. Do you see, I mean, I, I didn't even realize that the uptick, I mean, six, you know, three to 6,000 new customers is massive. I mean, that's just unbelievable. When you start to look at that, are they looking at it as a way to make it easier for those developers just because the developers don't, you, to your point on cognitive load, don't want to have to think about what are the guardrails every time. What are the pieces of security? And they should have to, frankly. So they're going through and using the different pieces that are, and maybe there are choices in there that they have to make so they're not pinned into one way. Is that what you're seeing best of breed kind of doing? I mean, I think the, you can have as many templates as you want. I mean, obviously every developer 
uh, you have to have choice, right? Meaning you can't be the only way to do it. I expect a large organization to give choices, but not a infinite choices or, or random choices everybody makes. Right, right now it's like free for all, right? You want to create a deploy application to AWS, you're going to come up one way and he's going to come up with another way. So the thing is, you give like a set of templates, a certain ways to do this thing, and that's, that's helpful. But I think I expect that kind of like, not infinite, but like a set. But yeah, that's, that's definitely what I see. Happy. I think, uh, yeah, I, I love that. And uh, there's no reason, it's like, we don't need to reinvent the wheel every time. Just let everyone get in the same basic car chassis and then customize your whip. You know, we've got... In fact, the, in Backstage is so good, this uh, plugin ecosystem. Yeah. So there's a core, and then a very rich ecosystem of plugins. Red Hat is bringing its own plugin, or core functionality, like pipeline, GitOps, single sign-on. But then third-party plugin, I mean, we're going to verify and certify the platform, and really, literally hundreds of uh, community plugins. That yeah. anyone can plug in because you know it's important to connect to a company's system and backstage is really good at connecting to a really heterogeneous uh, um, uh, pool of systems. That's uh, a really great point. Yeah, yeah go I for want it, to add to it. I was just talking to a partner right now, and they're you know I won't name them for right now, but uh, they're a feature flag company, right? And they are asking me how which what kind of plugins should be should we building, right? So I'm like you know think of a developer life journey. Like he is using feature flag obviously in his pro, in his in his. Pro. How do how do what what kind of information that should be exposed in this uh, portal? So yeah. he can see, for example, what is the feature flag that's enabled in the production for this application. Maybe he said, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Maybe I want to turn off the feature. So it gives that view, like what 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 got, what got pushed. What you know, I guess think about the life of a, a developer and. This feature flag is just one, one example of a tool, but there are lots of tools you could use, and you can bring all of those um, into the one uh, single dashboard. So the developer can actually do everything, and that's a beautiful thing to do. That is a beautiful thing. All right, you know what I'm going to close on, the question I always ask you all. Since you're such regular guests and we have you on all the time, what are you going to be able, what do you hope to be able to say when I have you on in Salt Lake or somewhere else soon uh, that you can't currently say right now? Uh, obviously not confidential, but you know, give us a little prediction. Yeah. Natalia, I'm going with you. You got your smiles too big not to. Yeah, yeah. we were mentioning <laughs> the trust of the supply chain is coming very soon. Yes. Uh, it's going to be GA uh, end, of, end of month, the, the, the part with uh, tr signing uh, a trusted art artifact signer and trusted profile analyzer. Uh, so we, this is uh, coming soon. And um, as far as I know, Balaji can share more about the Red Hat Developer Hub, but we have a really very good amount of plugins, comments, and features, as you can Whoa, share yeah. more. Well, for me, it's all about AI. You know, how, how, how is the, this experience could be turbocharged with AI, right? Because, you know, you, you can imagine, we can, we can go on for another whole hour on this. Easily. But, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we will soon. We, we, yeah. we, we did talk about it a little bit, yeah. yeah. So the thing is, um, there's so much to do, like these templates that you're talking about. Can I just create it by talking to it? Like, because, you know, like, can the platform engineer just right. do it? Can I can I like talk about like tri there's a lot of tribal knowledge instead of doing click 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 can I just talk to it like hey what is going on with it? what feature flags are enabled I don't have to go and click on a tab and see what it is and you just ask the thing there's so much you can do you so want, that's I'll give you one okay so this because you you actually by looking at the templates being able to understand and go in there and figure out what templates have already been made for yeah, AWS exactly. for this service that's right, using you can this. Talk to it, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. That would be awesome. It can ask I hope to see that next time we're on. Absolutely. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> see, hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. 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 We can see, they yeah. can just talk to it and figure out which template is the right template for you. Yeah. Like we talked about exactly. we, could do a demo. we could do a demo with that. That would actually yeah, be, be awesome. really awesome. I love that. Okay, uh, final thing before we wrap here. You have an event coming up in Italy. Yep, it's called Kubernetes Community Day Italy, and it's happening in June, and you are very welcome to submit any talk you <laughs> want to talk at our conference, and you're very welcome to attend the conference. It's going to be in Bologna this year. Oh. Last year was in Milan. So if you come, great talk, great stuff, great food. So why, why you have to miss it? Come over. I'm, I'm sold. <laughs> I'm in. We'll have to convince. We'll have to convince the crew to, to do Italy. Though I'm pretty sure this whole production staff over here would be very very excited about Especially that. Especially with the, the symbol being pizza, a pizza pie. Like I, 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 I love it. Love it's it. so love good. It. The, sticker, it. the sticker branding. will be on later. Great so. branding as usual. I mean, it's Red yes. Hat we're talking to. They yes. got they got the branding game sorted. Absolutely. Balaji, Natalia, it is such a joy to have you on the stage. Pleasure. Thank you for being back. I'm I'm very confident. I'll see both of you sitting here next minute, very soon. And also, Rob, you're just having a killer day. We're having 10 an out of awesome 10. day. Yes. 10 
out of 10. And I hope you're having a fantastic day at home or wherever you're tuning in to our three days of live coverage here from Paris at KubeCon, Cloud NativeCon. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.